So let's get started. It's uh, five minutes past the witching hour, and it's time for us to, I think we have a quorum. Uh, just thank you, everybody, for being here. I know that life continues to run at a very fast pace, and uh, this is a very hot topic, and there's a lot going on, and I uh, just appreciate the opportunity for us to, to gather. Um, looking at the agenda, you know, we've got, uh, let me do introductions real quick in terms of those that I've got. Uh, George Amendola, Cyberdynamics. Sasha Burroughs with the consortium, Brian Chong, City of Moore Park, Monica Gibbs, AT&T, no Noel Heredia, Digital Value Creation, Angela Hayama with Comcast, Brian Miko is with USC, um, Kevin Pisasich with the City of Oxnard, Jonathan Royas with the City of Santa Paula, Stephen Sawyer with Charter Communications, myself with the consortium, Terry Theobald, the County of Ventura, Steve Weingart with Ridge Communications, Tim Williams, Digital West, and Wave. Did I forget anybody? Somebody, oh, and there's Derek Kettle with VCTC. So thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, going over the agenda real quick. We'll talk a little bit about just the various funding sources. Won't spend a lot of time there right now. I want to talk a little bit more about how our thinking has shifted in terms of an approach for community civic transformation. I want to spend some considerable time drilling down in each of those areas, though the middle mile network, digital inclusion, smart cities, and then uh, let Sasha talk a bit about the website that we're working on, and then let you have the conversation, anything else you want to talk about. Um, with any luck, we can run a little bit hot, a little bit fast, because I know everybody's busy, but at the same time, I want to make sure we cover all these bases. Um, it's a crazy landscape out there is all I can say. You know, we have lots of funds. Obviously, we were put in business by CSF and the California Public Utilities Commission, but they're also looking for all the collaborative opportunities available. The distance learning telemedicine grants, I think it's the uh, first part of June where those applications are coming due. I saw something from NTIA yesterday talking about the new funding coming out of there. EDA has always been something that we've been pursuing and uh, EDA is something that's being pursued up in the, the Northern Santa Barbara County area in terms of their network. There's this whole area that I'm just calling political action. And that is we just don't know how all the pieces are gonna fall. You know, where the, where the funds are going to be ending up, where they're going to be distributed. I know Terry's doing a lot of good work with the Digital Divide Coalition, and, and they're working very hard to be able to bring it home, whatever that looks like, however that's going to work. It's, it's still very much in process. The state of California, uh, we, we had, I think, the week before last, the governor, you know, plussed up next year's budget significantly for broadband. And so, you know, how that's going to be distributed, whether it'll be through CPUC or other programs. Um, I, I just see this thing in, in a constant state of flux. I mean, there is no snapshot of all the places you go. There is no one stop. It's still being put together. So any comments about that, any insights, anything that would ought to be on this page that we don't have on there that we need to be keeping track of, I, I welcome that, but it's, to me, my perspective, it's a moving target. Terry, unmute, please. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to just stay off mute and, and not say anything. Um, so the, the thing that I think uh, came out of the Digital Divide group, which was pretty eye-opening for me, uh, as we look at these um, various funding opportunities, is they, they did us the favor working with, I believe they worked with Crown, and, and basically they're going after for the seven Southern California counties, um, which I believe northbound ends with us, is um, 8.8 .8 billion with a B. Um, and uh, so by my math, um, looking at how they did their math, their calculation is that in order for us to provide broadband, to every single dwelling in our county, we're talking about $660 million. So when I start looking at funding opportunities for $500,000, I'm thinking I'm gonna need a lot of those to get to $660 million. So I think, I think it's important to know what the number is. 
Um, and, at, and at this point, you know, we're, we're, I'm jumping ahead probably in the agenda, but the, the digital divide group basically has put together a letter which the seven county CEOs and the seven county, um, um, seven counties have one board member on the digital divide group. So they have seven board members, one for each county, the CEOs for each county. Uh, they've asked the broadband consortium, uh, Pacific Coast Broadband Consortium to sign the letter. Uh, they've asked the Economic Development Coalition to sign the letter. Um, they've asked a number of other people. Um, uh, Brian uh, was very helpful um, in helping us get some support letters from the various um, entities in our region, which we can include. So there's a lot of um, support going into this, into this request. And um, we're looking at uh, roughly four point, I think we're trying to get 4.8 from the feds and four, four billion from the state. Um, so just wanted to point out it's a big number. Um, and when we look at the funding sources, I think it's, it becomes, it becomes apparent um, that we're not talking about a couple million dollars is going to get, get us very far. We're talking about some massive numbers here uh, to make this happen. Thanks. That's all I have. It's an interesting process. It, 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 it really is. And um, I, I've never seen anything quite like this before. We did uh, get the, I know that Bruce Stensley talked with the, the supervisor, uh, Ramirez, and I have put together yesterday or the day before a, a joint letter on behalf of the EDC and the consortium and have bounced it back uh, to the templates that they've got. And I mean, we're lobbying Capitol Hill and, you know, the state of California and, you know, doing whatever we can do to bring that money down here. But we'll see, yeah, you know. And I guess in the process of securing those funds, you've got to figure out how to administer those funds. And that's looking like SCAG somehow plays a role. No, actually we, um, well. Actually, I think... I, yeah, actually I, I seem to recall that somehow there was gonna, Esri was factoring in as part of a partner in this whole thing as well. It was, that was well, kind of interesting in the letters. Well, what Esri's role in this thing is to uh, help us with our mapping and where we need to go uh, because they have uh, they're willing to help us pull the um all the assets together that are out there that they're aware of plus make sure the mapping for all the regions and specifically the disadvantaged regions because the 8.8 .8, the impetus for the 8.8 .8 was really disadvantaged underserved um not west lake village not pacific palisades um, although if they don't have it, and trust me, Westlake does not have great internet service, uh, at least on the part that I happen to be in, uh, they, um, they have internet service, but there are a lot of them that just aren't being served. They either got bypassed because there wasn't an economic solution that worked for the ISPs, or they're just, they're, they're just not getting what they need. So that was the impetus, but the numbers, the calculation is based on all dwellings. So in Ventura County, we're talking about 960,000 dwellings that need to be served, um, 50,000 of which would be considered underserved or disadvantaged. These are numbers that I've computed based upon both um, publicly available uh, data and the calculations that the SCAG slash CPUC slash Crown Castle put together. And regarding governance, um, I asked that question at the last meeting, how is this gonna be governed? Because that's a $8.8 .8 billion is a big number. And is, is that SCAG's role in this thing? Um, so their answer is it's, the answer I got kind of on the sidebar was that SCAG is not in the business of governing funds um, or managing ISPs, where I think most people would say that's where this money's gonna wind up going. Um, so then who is, is, is the, is BizFid going to do it? Is Caltrans going to do it? Uh, who should be doing it? And I think, I think that a SCAG is leaning in the direction of the counties, uh, should have a, a significant role in the, um, management of this funds because there, that's where the RPs are probably going to come out of. Um, and the one, and the one caveat to that is, um, there are, there are ISPs that would have projects that span counties. Um, we're, we're, we have a project that would require us to go into LA County on, on two paths. And so when we let the RFPs out for, for what we want to do there, we need to coordinate with LA County. And so SCAG would expect, um, I think most of the counties would expect that there's some economies of scales with the RFPs and the ISPs and how, they, uh, how that all comes together. So at the next digital divide meeting, uh, which I believe is next week, 
um, we will be, we will, that I asked them to put that on the agenda. So we'll get more details on where people weigh in on that. Yeah, Terry, I appreciate you being a leader in that area because it's just a, a different place. And, you know, we, we need a voice like yours kind of asking the hard questions. And um, uh, I, I have to be honest with you, I've been dodging it. <laughs> it's just for a number of landmines, those kinds of things. It's really interesting. You know, for the last few years, we've been focused on the tri county area and everything we've done is just to, to, to stay close to home. This is coming from left field. It's, it's, a, it's a completely different dynamic. We're having different conversations as consortia. There's four, three consortia with one being created in the LA area involved. We're gonna have a role, the role still being defined. It's gonna be part of our future conversations about whatever's happening and our role in the, you know, the working with the municipalities. And it, it, it's gonna be a different world in the next 12 months, I think. Yeah, I should probably add CSAC. Um, yeah. I, I, you might've mentioned it too. So CSAC is um, focused on the entire state. So CSAC thinks that um, they can do the entire state for, um, the entire state, not just Southern California, for eight billion dollars with a B. So I think it's I think it's interesting. CSAC thinks they need eight for all of the state, and SCAG thinks we need eight point eight for just the seven Southern California counties. Um, so you got two large entities going after a lot of money. I don't think we're going to wind up with with sixteen point eight billion dollars out of this thing, but who knows? We say broadband is the fourth utility is about to become real. You know, with, I mean, it's the, the purpose of these funds is to go door to door and to make it that way. So it's very interesting. Unprecedented times, I think. Thank you, Terry. I want to update you a little bit about uh, the Connected Community Roadmap. We, we had a, a video that we've shared with you in previous meetings. It, ends, it talks about three steps, a, a ladder, if you will. And the three steps are the same, but we come to the realization that probably a three-legged stool is is is, uh, is a better uh, uh, metaphor to talk about how you integrate processes within communities, and and then then a ladder. A ladder means you have to climb. A matter. A ladder means you got to take one step at a time. Really, you got to do all three of these things. You got to build infrastructure. You've got to deal with inclusion issues. You've got to be talking about innovation. Talking, been having a lot of conversations on the side uh, with a number of you folks about these metaphors and these things. What's novel about this is the ability to connect these activities to one another and track it, to realize that they actually complement each other and to make sure that they don't occur separate and apart. And, and so, you know, Terry is working on the, the middle mile discussion. Um, we're spending some time with the Community Foundation dealing with the inclusion uh, conversation, and there's some thoughts right now about maybe South Oxnard being our regional pilot, if you will, in some of those areas for inclusion and details to follow. We'll have a lot more about that next month. And then the Smart City Vision with the, you know, partnering, leveraging partnerships with the Navy has been an ongoing theme, and, and we're working that aggressively as well. And, and so, it, it's a big elephant, it, 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 but these boxes all connect. These strategies can play well with each other. And when you do them together, there's a, a real opportunity to transform. You know, you have new infrastructure, you have new technology, and you have new relationships. And, and so that's really uh, how our overall strategy is, is evolving. And, and so it's, it's an exciting time. And... Uh, we could be in the business of any one of these things and it would be a full-time job. But what we're really trying to do is work all three of these things, three legs of the stool, if you will. And so as we do, uh, that conversation will uh, continue to unfold. First of those three legs though, is this infrastructure piece and it's the middle mile network. And I'll turn back to Terry, you know, in terms of any status updates or even Jerry as well, he just popped on. Um, Terry, any status updates about the RFI? And, and Jory can chime in and you know add anything that we may have forgotten. Sure. Um, so the um, so we we've been going through the RFIs. As a matter of fact, I believe it was yesterday we gave um, Jory and Melanie access to the RFI uh, information so they can also peruse it. 
I think their input on it will be very valuable. Uh, my, my initial impression, well, actually it's more than initial now, but my impression of the RFI is we didn't really learn anything new. Um, we, I think we learned some more about assets, and, uh, but we, I think we didn't get the, the overwhelming response we thought we might get. Um, and there weren't, it was really more treated like an RFP than it was treated like an RFI. Um, and I think those that thought we were serious responded and those that thought we weren't serious or, or weren't sure if we were serious probably didn't respond. So if, if that winds up being the final assessment of this, then I think that we can very easily shift from where we are into RFP mode because we're just going to continue to go down the same path we were going. Um, so Jory, any comments on uh, that? Uh, no, Terry, I'll follow your lead on where the things are with the RFI. We have not had a chance to review the documents yet. <clears throat> um, we're getting access today, I believe. Um, in general, the conversations that we've had with service providers is there still are a number of them that are interested. And as you said, um, we didn't learn, well, we may not have learned anything new than what we've already received um, in our conversations uh, with the service providers prior to the RFI. Right, and I, I also want to I also want to add to the middle mile conversation that you know we the county project the county project started primarily um, uh, well let me say it this way the original the original focus was um, uh, lower government cost for internet and inter facility connectivity. Um, spur economic development in support of the economic vitality plan, the county published strategic plan, um, and, and uh, serve the underserved and the disadvantaged neighborhoods. The plan itself, as it was initial, uh, initially uh, created, really focused on the first one probably more than the other two, in my opinion. Um, when um, COVID happened, the, it completely shifted uh, to, the, to the, the latter two. And um, the focus now isn't on just the middle mile, the focus is on the middle mile and the disadvantaged neighborhoods. So while we'll continue to, it's kind of like we're planning, I, I've used this analogy before, it's kind of like we're building a freeway system and we're, we're, we're already trying to build out, we're talking about building out individual streets and neighborhoods and we don't even have a, a way to get the cars there or back or we're building a water system and we're worried about fountains and water parks and we don't have the main aqueduct yet. Um, and so we continue to be focused on the, the information superhighway or the middle mile freeways for the information that we believe need to be in place and hook them up as we've indicated. Uh, but I don't wanna lose sight of the fact in, in our discussions that um, when we talk to the digital divide group, we talk about this money, we talk about the funding, it isn't just for the middle mile. The middle mile cost is estimated somewhere uh, between 20 and $25 million for all three legs. Previously, I said we've estimated the um, cost to support all, the, all of the dwellings in the county at 660 million, 660 million. so 2025, 660. So there's a lot of work beyond just getting the middle miles done that's going to fall in the lap of, of our planning here uh, pretty shortly, I feel. Um, not just ours, obviously, we'll be leaning heavily on our um, commercial uh, private partners uh, to help us with this. But uh, if we're responsible for making sure that $660 million is spent properly to achieve our goals, then it's going to be a, a good partnership that we'll need to have to make that happen. Terry, since our last meeting, you also had the opportunity to, you know, brief VCTC. I did. Um, and I, if you were going to ask that question, I was going to see if Darren would be interested since <laughs> Darren is actually the director of the v VCTC that he might want to uh, give us some feedback on how that went. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks, Terry. Um, hi, Bill. And nice to see folks. Um, yeah. So, so Terry, um, it really came out of a request from a couple of members of the Board of Supervisors who sit on who sit on the commission asked that there be a, dis a discussion about broadband, which we did have at our last meeting. Terry presented um, some of this material and, and, and made some requests of the commission. Um, and uh, so um, a lot of questions, you know, it's remarkable how fast time is moving and where we were just a few weeks ago to where we are today with you know, the governors may revise and a lot of money for broadband and, and just how fast this is moving. Um, and, um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's, um, 
it's all positive. It's just a matter of how do you make sure you keep up with it all. Uh, so next, um, our next commission meeting, I'm going to be um, doing a couple of things at, at VCTC. We're going to be modifying our legislative program to support um, efforts to ensure high speed uh, internet broadband um, as in, in, in the context of that such um, such developments um, reduce trips. Um, and so we're looking at it from a transportation perspective through that lens. Um, so we will, I mean, it's gonna be just part of our legislative platform. So that again, the idea being that we, we can write support letters for funding in particular, or if there's other policy issues that the legislature is gonna deal with, um, that we have a, a vehicle to be able to use that um, through our legislative program. Um, we will also be working um, only, only because I think it's still unknown and Terry touched on this very briefly is that SCAG is in the middle of this conversation. Um, I, but I, I'm not absolutely certain um, that SCAG knows exactly what it's into at this point. Um, and, and that's okay. I mean, that's not their job. Um, their job is not to be um, developing infrastructure. Um, they've identified an issue related to um, the digital divide. Um, and again, uh, SCAG is the regional transportation planning agency for all of Southern California. So they're care, they care about trip, trips being reduced as well, but I don't know that they understand the real magnitude of what this brought Broadband conversation is other than we see it as a social issue, we see it as a transportation issue, um, and at least in some private conversations that I had had with Komei Ajise, the SCAG executive director, um, was that he was actually looking because transportation commissions deliver infrastructure projects that he'd actually be looking towards transportation agencies for implementation of uh, of broadband services and infrastructure which makes me and all of my colleagues in the other counties a little bit anxious because that's not our bailiwick either. Um, we build rail projects, we would build highway projects, we have not done infrastructure, we're not staffed or resourced for that. So I think there's a lot of unknowns in, in that conversation. But the other part of the element that I'm gonna be taking in my commission is that we'll be working with SCAG in, in, as they work to develop the policies and processes for putting money out there to to further in broadband infrastructure. And then thirdly, um, and this was a direct request from Terry, is that VCTC uh, and the county work to negotiate an arrangement for um, the Santa Paula Branch Line corridor that serves the Santa Clara River Valley, starting in East Ventura and going all the way out uh, to the county line, Los Angeles County, Ventura County line through Santa Paula, Fillmore and Piru. Uh, to utilize our rail corridor as the corridor where broadband infrastructure could um, could be uh, could be installed or, or built uh, constructed, um, and so uh, we're going to continue that conversation. So, so those, I, I those are the things that we have. Right here that I missed. So sorry. Yeah, I should have thought of this before. So so Bill. Yes. Uh, let me just add, um, Darren just reminded me indirectly that um, with regard to SCAG, so Supervisor Carmen Ramirez Oxnard for the county um, has been appointed as one of the vice presidents. I'm not sure the exact title, but one of the vice presidents mm -hmm. for SCAG. So that puts a pretty strong voice at a pretty high level at SCAG that should be able to help us navigate the, the SCAG governance piece. And also SCAG has um, asked us to consider presenting to SCAG the um, project we've been working on because uh, they feel that um, this middle mile project that we've worked on in collaboration with um, Joy's team at Magellan is, is pretty far along the process. There are other um, counties, jurisdictions, that have talked, but they haven't actually gone through the effort to do the engineering um, and the estimating and, and get us to a point where um, we're kind of in the neighborhood of, I'll say, dig ready. And it's and the, um, the Santa Paula branch line route, which is the ABC uh, mostly of what's depicted here, um, uh, winds up coming close to or directly contacting four um, county um, disadvantaged areas. So that makes them dig worthy. 
And that's a major criteria for SCAG, dig worthy and dig ready. So we have both of those um, to a point where once we have funding and we have, and we have um, the RFPs in process, we're, we kind of are at the front of the, of the wave here, which uh, I think will have some interest to SCAG and may also um, uh, help with our, our position in the overall discussion of funding and how it's governed. So one other update I wanted to provide separate but related and it kind of pulls this all together. I'm queuing Jory Wolf here. I, I've mentioned to you in recent meetings over the last six months to a year, our involvement as a consortium with SCAG in a Southern California pilot. And, and basically we haven't made much progress there because we were waiting for the hiring of a consultant. They went through a whole process, uh, RFPs, proposals, and they selected a consultant this last month. It was Magellan Advisors. So in the last two weeks, I guess now, Jory, uh, we, we, we had a meeting. It was a launch of uh, coming up with some regional planning from a SCAG perspective. And uh, Jory, you just might wanna share your role and you know what that project's about and how that might connect a lot of these dots, both from the digital divide, the funding, the SCAG, you know, middle mile, all of this discussion. Uh, thank you, Bill. Um, um, SCAG did put out a, a, a very lengthy RFP process, and there were a, quite a number of um, respondents to that RFP. Uh, the long and the short of it is that Magellan was selected, and we did kick off um, after um, a period of scope review and, and contracting. We kicked off the meeting about two weeks ago. Um, it was a good kickoff. Um, we had good attendance. <clears throat> Sonny McPeak was um, uh, presenting on behalf of SCAG and, and uh, the work that the CETF had been doing in the state. Um, how the SCAG project that we're working on is related to other work that is taking place related to broadband within the region. Um, this is a partnership. <clears throat> uh, Magellan Advisors is the prime on the project, but we do have um, a subcontractor that we're working with, a company called DKS. Uh, they are a traffic engineering firm <coughs> and they will be assisting on some of the um, highly <coughs> specialized analytical work around uh, trips um, traveled and carbon emissions uh, from vehicles. The concept here of this project is to look at how broadband can influence and can um, start to decrease or have a benefit, a beneficial impact on number of trips and carbon emissions within the region. Um, it is looking also at areas where there are unserved and underserved communities throughout five counties um, of this project area, Imperial, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, Los Angeles, and Ventura County, all members of the SCAG um, uh, Association. Uh, the, um, the project is um, a 10-month project uh, at this point. Um, we are uh, now in the process of gathering data, very much like um, the process that we conducted in Ventura County, uh, looking for assets, looking for underserved and unserved areas within the five-county region. Um, this effort will be, again, like the Ventura County effort, but with um, a, an additional goal of, of uh, understanding how building of broadband networks can have beneficial impacts on our environment um, and, and reduce the impacts of vehicular travel uh, throughout the five county region in Southern California. Um, that's where we are in a nutshell. Uh, we have meetings scheduled on a regular basis. Um, we are getting into the thick of data collection now and starting to work on some of the analytics um, from uh, various research that's already been done um, at the state and by several foundations, uh, other think tanks and uh, contracted um, consultants um, at the state and, and at the five county level. Back to you, Bill. Yeah. So Darren, Terry, you'll be very much plugged into all of these conversations as advisors as this continues to unfold. I think there's going to be a meeting scheduled shortly of, of advisors and, uh, you know, that that's off and running trying to connect these dots that we've been talking about, you know, and it really is how to align the corridors 
to you know fiber builds and also then how to be shifting behaviors you know in terms of broadband versus getting on getting on highways and transit so that the nexus is being defined you know and, and studied and analyzed and and uh hopefully the super highway and the physical highway are going to converge at some point uh, in terms of the way people look at things it's very interesting bell too i just want to mention on the topic of transportation i think transportation is going to play quite a nexus in all of these conversations about broadband funding within the region especially in southern california where traffic traffic congestion and the environmental impacts of high volumes of vehicles um, is, is a big issue. We saw it already in the South Bay network that we assisted in, in designing and, and in building. Um, and we saw as soon as the South Bay regional network was built, not only did we connect cities, but immediately the Ritz network, uh, which is the Caltrans um, uh, regional um, communications network, um, Caltrans itself, and also the County of Los Angeles and LA Metro um, grabbed on to the project, and that's where the majority of our funding came from in terms of Measure M uh, to fund the build. Um, so it's become not just a broadband economic development project, but a transportation project. Um, interestingly, um, the, we've seen these kinds of synergies taking place elsewhere. Um, we're looking at connecting the city of Santa Clarita through the Ritz network, um, through Caltrans, and connecting them to one Wilshire downtown and having a permanent connection, not a leased connection. Um, additionally, we were just on the phone with Caltrans yesterday and the cities of Pasadena and the city of Glendale uh, that need to form a connection because of a lot of the traffic uh, and transportation work that they do collectively, besides the power grids that they manage collectively with the city of Burbank and many other things that they have in common in terms of shared services, uh, water included. Um, and transportation um, has brought Caltrans into the conversation, and it looks like we've got a good Caltrans project to be able to create um, a publicly owned asset to connect those three communities. Previews of coming attractions. Um, okay, any other topics before we move on? I, I wanted to, to pivot at this point and give our uh, communities, uh, municipalities, a chance to just provide brief updates and, and maybe Brian, if you don't mind going first, uh, and just how, how's the broadband discussion going in Moore Park? Yeah, no, we're still down our list of things to do from our broadband strategic plan. Um, our RFI for the market study for our library meet me room uh, is gonna go out either May 28th or June 1st, but right about at the end of the month. Um, it's actually drafted, uh, Magellan uh, drafted it. We had some edits. Uh, we, we gave those over to Magellan yesterday and they're you know, working on that. So we are on target and on schedule with that. I um, also just wanted to kind of rip, rip, kind of add a little data to something Terry said. Um, I, I, I ran into our superintendent of schools um, and asked her, hey, where is the area that you serve, you know, here in the Moore Park School District, where you're having trouble with connections. And she immediately didn't even think about it. She just said it's Moore Park Home Acres, which is actually in the, the unincorporated county immediately west of Moore Park. Uh, it's not a low income neighborhood by any stretch of the imagination, but it is an old, old neighborhood that predates Moore Park being a city. So it, it, that's exactly the kind of community that I think everyone is targeting. Um, the other thing, too, that we're working on, we're, we're kicking a lot of tires right now on smart city technologies. I mentioned last time that, you know, we, we seem to, as a civilization, if you will, have turned the corner um, where the technology is meeting, you know, the, where the rubber hits the road. And I, I'll give a plug just because I want to try to catch up to Greg Hayward's mark on the, uh, the Broadband Consortium podcast interviews. But if you want more information, I talk about that a little more at length in this week's video. That's it for more part. Thank you, Brian. Kevin, any thoughts from Oxnard? Well, I think probably like everybody else, um, our leadership has started looking at the American Recovery, Recovery Plan and seeing what might be applicable uh, in Oxnard. And uh, I think, you know, looks like we'll start to see some more movement on things, um, especially as we have a new director come in. 
uh, soon. And uh, so we'll see where things go, but that's the uh, short update for us. Thank you, Kevin. Mitchell. Hey, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> uh, I just want to thank uh, you, Bill and uh, Terry. I think some of the work that you both have done with economic development and transportation has really kind of allowed uh, momentum to build in the city of Ventura, at least. Um, we, you know, we, we now have multiple division director or division managers who understand it and uh, are willing to, you know, have conversations about it. So I appreciate that. Um, one thing I wanted to put out there as well um, is we did obtain a Caltrans grant, <clears throat> um, a little over $3 million to help build out our traffic signal project. Um, for those of you who may know, um, when we did our Magellan strategic plan, that was a big, uh, our Magellan broadband strategic plan, that was a large component of uh, their recommendation. So we're, we're, we're taking a step back and really reevaluating you know, our approach um, with, with this new information. Um, more to come. And again, I appreciate everyone. I hope you guys have a good week. Thank you, Mitchell. Jonathan, Andy, anything from Santa Paula that you'd like to share? Hey, good, good morning, everyone. Um, just a few things to share with everybody. You know, I just have to, a big thank you to Brian and, and Bill um, and Tim Williams um, and, and everybody, Brian, Darren Kettle for assistance. Um, we submitted a letter of support for the Ventura uh, County Broadband Network. Um, so we were very happy to do that and, and jump in and um, get on board on that train. Um, we also had a good call recently with uh, Bill and Tim Williams um, regarding broadband in Santa Paula and kind of looking at what the, the future strategic plan of that might look like. Um, Council Member Sobel is uh, on our call as well right now, and I believe we might be also setting up a conversation um, with Spectrum um, soon. Um, and then I think also even in greater news, um, one of the things that I'm excited about is we had initial discussions I shared with you regarding the ARP dollars um, that our city will be receiving soon. And council has not made affirmative um, decision yet, but we've had initial conversations um, about setting aside funds for um, broadband infrastructure projects. And council was um, pretty much all on board with setting aside some of those ARP dollars to help kind of get those wheels turning in Santa Paula. So excited to see that. And then our strategic plan, um, we just concluded um, a special study session regarding that. And um, it is also now broadband is included in our two year strategic plan for going forward. And I did see that council member Sobel is um, on our call today. So I didn't know Andy, if you had anything else you wanted to share? Uh, no, that pretty much covers it, appreciate it. Great, thank you guys for being here. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm on one seed that I want to plant with everybody just to be thinking about. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole today, but one theme that has occurred over the last several months is how do we inculcate these broadband conversations just into the culture, in, into the awareness of, of each of our municipalities? And, and where that's coming from is I've heard from various people at different times. We had an election. Uh, the people have changed. You know, we have some new, Jonathan is, is almost brand new to Santa Paula. You know, and, and, and what happens in the process of flux is the conver we have to restart. You know, the conversation, we, it's, a, it's like we have new kids on the block and we also have new people that are being elected. And, you know, in the city of Ventura, you've had dramatic shift and change, you know, up on in your council dais. And is there a way we can have a, a quick start program or, you know, can we accelerate the reboot or, you know, how can we just take these conversations and make them more permanent that kind of transcend all of this change in personnel and political leadership? And, and I, you know, it's a big, it's a big question. It's a, it's a big issue, but, you know, it's something that we need to, to think about. And, you know, Terry, I keep coming back to what the digital divide group is going to be looking to the consortium to do, go to each of the municipalities, try to keep everybody engaged, try to keep everybody informed, try to keep everybody on the same page, doing a lot of the stuff that needs to be done regionally. But we've got to keep everybody that's part of that conversation at the same place without having to reboot and restart it all every time. And so don't know how to do all that, but we're gonna have, hopefully we'll get further down the road and, and there'll be much more of a shared understanding in the direction the road's going. Just one thought to share on that, Bill, what some of the other kind of interest groups that will do 
is following, particularly, I guess, a January, February timeframes, uh, organizations will offer kind of trainings, if you will, on here's what happens, here's, here's the lay of the land, here's these issues, that kind of thing. Uh, as an example for cities, when you're a new planning commissioner or a new council member, you know, people don't necessarily know the intricacies of, of what conversations you can have publicly, what's public record, what's not, that kind of thing, and training is provided. And we'll send elected officials to these trainings or these days on Zoom. Um, you know, possibly, you know, you could do something like that specific to broadband issues and efforts in the region. And then you can hit, you know, the 10 new council members from 10 new cities, you know, who may show up in an election and do that. Whether or not they will attend is a different question, but that is an approach used by, by some other groups. That's not a bad idea. I mean, in my mind, as you were discussing it, I'm thinking the military term, the sit rep, situation report, you know, and, and if we said, if we had a training where it wouldn't, maybe no more than an hour, but here's the middle mile network and, and how it's working and where we're at. Here is digital inclusion where it's working, where we're at. Here is this opportunity to collaborate for technology innovation, how it's working, where we're at. I mean, and just report on it the first time, you know, within the first few weeks that they show up into their new roles, that would be very, very helpful. You know, it, uh, that's a great idea, Brian. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. You know, the other organizations are doing it. That's something we need to consider as well. Here, here. Yeah. So let's let's keep moving on, and maybe we can catch up some time. Uh, oops, go in the right screen. Digital inclusion. I mentioned that uh, we're really thinking in the last few days of some opportunities in South Oxnard. Uh, a lot of this has been triggered by, you know, some conversations uh, with the Spectrum and some of the thing, the opportunities to do some connecting that they've run across going through CSF dollars. But uh, they've done some interesting things in the, the consortia up north in the Monterey Bay area where they've targeted areas, they've defined requirements, they've gone off and done some fundraising. The telecoms have been engaged and been involved. You know, you, you know what, what you have going in and you're looking to have a Delta coming out. And so we're putting that plan together. And I hope if the timing goes right, we'll be able to show you exactly what the, the plan would be by the next meeting. And the idea is if we can do it, do it well, do it significantly and substantively in one area, it'll be scalable. We can do it everywhere. And, and so that's, that's kind of where the digital inclusion conversation is now. The community Foundation, is very much involved with this. And uh, it's this has been led by the Community Foundation up in the Monterey area as well. And so from that social equity perspective of the region, we're, we're glad to be able to make the connection and, and build a, a coalition to make this stuff uh, work. Hopefully, as we talk about the big picture that you know, is, is coming down, we'll have these mechanisms in place. Uh, when, when the funds arrive to be able to solve these problems. So that's one leg of the stool, if you will. Um, smart cities, uh, we're continuing to percolate on it. That's what, what the graphic means. It's, it's all percolating. And uh, there are certain companies, Greg Hayward's been a terrific uh, advocate. There, and then there's a number of other folks that are part of this team that are also plugged in as well as a few that are not in this team are plugged in, but you know, it, it's, Right now, we're looking at a, an event that would occur in the latter part of September that would coincide with some public safety experimentation as well as military experimentation and its technology innovation. The, the port of Wainimi is interested in being classified as a smart port. Greg has found, a, with the help of Brian Siemens as a company, to provide a light pole that we could look at certain technologies on that light pole cameras, sensors, you name it, and create a test bed for smart city tech. And, and so uh, hopefully we'll have a pretty good game plan put together in the next month. And uh, we're, we're considering this our first cohort. If we have seven to nine companies interested in playing um, this year, perhaps we can double it next year and then just keep pushing it year after year after year. And as the conversation is regionalized, um, we were able to, to share that technology across all the cities here and, and for that matter up the coast. So 
that's where the that's the innovation leg of our uh, smart city uh, foundations tool and i'm going to let sasha talk about upgrades he's doing on the website but i wanted to pause before we talk about the website and see if there are any before we jump into that if there are any thoughts that you have of, before we go to the website and then the round table any questions about what we've covered so far okay sasha all right thank you bill let me share you want screen. you want to are you do you want me to jump off and let you you have the screen or what, what's your plan I think I can take over here. Hold on. Okay. All right, are we viewing it? Yes. Okay, perfect. So as Bill said, we are revamping the website. Uh, I kind of just want to give you a quick walkthrough today. Um, not in a ton of depth, but just kind of see the direction we're going and then get any feedback. And uh, if there's anything, any questions, comments at the end, feel free. Um, so to basically walk through it, we have our social media at the top right hand uh, and our uh, functions right here up in the middle. Uh, one of the main things was how do we display important events and dates um, in a way that you can easily figure out what's going on and to um, get over to that location. So there's a cycle of dates here that go by on its own. And if you click on any one of them, they will actually take you to uh, whatever it is for that day. Followed by a short who we are, which also links to the about page. Followed by some of the most important stuff that we want to be able to show you that also reflects the Monday missives. So the three most recent podcasts we thought was a great addition with the pictures of who the recent person was so you can quickly figure out uh, in general what the discussion may be. And then followed by these, these pretty much directly reflect what's in the uh, Monday missive and there'll be a lot more of them, but these are the latest and greatest news, articles, and events that may, we maybe want to throw your way. Uh, we styled it in a way that you can freely look on your own, but so that we can also show you what we think is important for you to maybe be looking at. But in general, we want you to be able to cycle through and just kind of see what you're interested in. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's the pretty much a big uh, flashing YouTube. Um, we really wanna promote people going to the channel. Uh, thank you to those who actually have been watching. I know there's quite a few people who are getting uh, the views up on, on YouTube. We thank you for that. And uh, it's something we wanna to continue to promote and show people. So uh, having a big flash of YouTube was important to us just to uh, kind of top it off. And it's something you can't really miss. So moving on to about page, uh, our vision and our goal. So we're kind of a short description there, not too much text, not super, super text heavy, but um, just enough to kind of understand who the BCPC is, what we do, what our goals are, what our vision is. Uh, and then followed by some of our major topic and discussions, most of the things that we talk about um, here and, and elsewhere in other meetings and uh, kind of giving people a taste of what it is that we usually talk about as a group. Uh, this was very cool. We really enjoyed this. Um, this was Faces Behind Our Success. And if you looked at the Monday missive uh, from this Monday, uh, I sent out a little text box there asking pretty much anyone we would, I mean, if every single person could be highlighted in here who's in the meeting now, um, we would absolutely love that. So. Uh, thank you to Greg, Brian, and George for sending me some stuff over. I do apologize. I thought I had a lot more room in these text box. So this is about all we have room for. Uh, so I couldn't add in a super heavy description on each person, um, but we'd like to highlight you. And if you all could email me if you're interested on being on the website, 
uh, that'd be great if you could provide me with a headshot and anything in particular you want to make sure that I highlight about you. So here are our partners, these cycle through. And then some spaces we are looking to fill with either other stuff, it's under construction, but uh, just some words of wisdom here and there. Funding resources, this is mainly under construction compared to the rest of the website. Um, so this will have everything about learning about funding resources. Uh, lots of links in here you can navigate to and then extra content down here that we're currently developing. So contact us page, um, home base, but currently operating remotely, obviously, so nobody thinks they can walk right in. Um, there's an active map on this side, which you can actually use, uh, get directions and kind of focus in, see where you're at. Email us. Right now we're using Bill, but we're going to get a uh, collaborative email in which everyone can send to the same place. Um, we'll figure that out. I think uh, Greg will be helping us figure that out as well. Uh, but right now this links directly to Bill. And then finally at the bottom, a just some in more detail contact us that includes myself and uh, Bruce Stensley. And then at the very bottom, this is under construction, but at the very bottom right, we have the weekly missive. Um, I'm going to try to figure out a way I can pull this into the either the home or about page just to get it more uh, shown up there, but enter your email and it'll pretty much sign you right up for the weekly missives and we'll, we'll put people in that way. So that was pretty much a quick review of where we're at in terms of the website. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or Phil, if you have anything else to add. Please uh, feel free to, you know, discuss it with Sasha, myself, you know, any thoughts. I mean, this is, we're really uh, in the development mode. Uh, this is like a, a front end and a back end, if you will. It, it, the front end is the public facing piece. And, and uh, we, we really wanted to try to do more to accentuate the, uh, the social media that uh, Sasha has been bringing on board and helping us with. Um, the back end is going to happen next, and, you know, and that's, you know, once we get, we want to dive much more into detail of, you know, providing RFPs for funding and applications, uh, just, you know, model dig once policies, um, the collaborative library, if you will, or status of certain areas and, you know, and, and uh, so there's a there's a whole back end where I think that once you become part of the consortium, we'll, we'll want to make available as a resource a place and, and a collaborative space to, to continue these conversations on an ongoing basis. That's yet to be defined, but we wanted to really, uh, now that Sasha has been working on this, really move the conversation to the next level. So previews of coming attractions as well. Thank you, Sasha. Yeah, thank you. If you don't mind, I'd like to go back to the final slide and uh, give you a quick update here as well. Um, and allow you all to have the opportunity to ask questions, make comments, share information. Uh, the one thing that's really interesting that's happening, you know, we've been talking an awful lot about Ventura County, but uh, I'll give you an, up, an update. Um, about two, three weeks ago, uh, we got an inquiry statewide about which municipalities had broadband strategies and which counties had broadband strategies. And it came, I'm not exactly sure where the original origin came from. It came at us from about three different directions. And uh, I, I know that in it hit uh, San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties as well. RCRC, the Rural Communities Coalition, was the, the group that triggered it for those two counties. And it, it, everybody got the memo. Within the last week or two, a partner that we have up in San Luis Obispo County, REACH is the name of the organization, has come to us and they, you know, said, how do we you know, they've been talking to the supervisors in those two counties. Those two counties want a broadband strategy. 
and and uh, so I, I know that uh, there's some coalescence occurring and, and you know we're very much part of that um, it's going to be interesting because a lot of the good work that we've been doing here is going to be rapidly copied you know the, that's, I don't mean to make it sound like that, but we're, they're going to be moving in the same direction. Regional networks are going to be discussed. Uh, the partnering that's occurring is going to be discussed. Uh, you know, what, and, and we've been trying to, to nudge that direction. And it looks like uh, with the emergence of the strategy requirements, they're saying, how can we do the same thing? Asset mapping, collaborative development. Uh, regional middle mile connections, the conversation is going to become substantiated with the, the formalization of strategies up there. So that's exciting. And, and so I wanted to pass that on. Um, obviously, I have a bias. I, I love these three counties. It's, it's the best place in the whole country. You know, we've got the best weather and the best location and we're not encumbered by a lot of city folk. And I mean, it's just wonderful. And, and, and so I, I I'm very partial to you know trying to extend everything that's that's good across all three counties and uh, appreciate the fact that many of you folks are tri county as well and, and uh, will willing to share and willing to cooperate and be you know part of that network. But the network does appear to be expanding, and that's a good thing. Um, there's a 5G forum next week. Our partner up in uh, the northern Santa Barbara County area is hosting it. Uh, there's a flyer there. I think we put it out in the, the this last missive. And uh, 5G is a, is a great topic. We want to talk about uh, the world of possibility. We also want to talk about the world of reality. And uh, you know, it, it's uh, we it, 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 a big part of what we can do is educate. And uh, based on how this forum unfolds and hopefully other forums beyond it, uh, we want to keep 5G very much as, as something that everybody's talking about, learning about, wanting to move forward and, and uh, be an advocate uh, to the point that we can educate uh, community leaders about what the benefits of that technology. And then I mentioned earlier USDA, the distance learning and telemedicine grants. So. Those are the announcements and updates I wanted to pass on. How about you all? Anything that you want to pass on? Any questions you might have any over anything you've heard? Well, I just wanted to suggest for the uh, members page, uh, for the description for Mitchell Cameron, and this is true, was Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2006. What? You can Google it right now. <laughs> it's not, people don't realize, but. <laughs> Is it the same Mitchell Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that one borrowed my name though. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, any other topics for, for the good of the order? Uh, Bill, I have, I have one. Okay. Um, uh, I think this might be important to everyone. Actually, it is uh, to, to all counties and to all cities that are receiving ARP funds. Um, uh, I'm just going to give you just a little bit of an intro, and I'll try to keep this brief at three minutes. Um, and just know that there's obviously more information coming. Um, you all probably received good information that is part of SCARES 2 that counties and cities across and states across the country were going to be receiving. Um, discretionary funds. Um, well, it turns out that the funds are not completely discretionary. Um, the um, the register, federal register just came out on Monday um, and we're reviewing the federal register very carefully. And what we're seeing so far is that one, um, the register is out and a comment period will be started and the comment period will last for about a month, but the comment period doesn't start until July. So we encourage everyone to start getting their copies of the Federal Register. There is a synopsis of the Federal Register in the back or the end of the Federal Register itself. Uh, Magellan would be very happy to forward information to Bill for Bill to distribute it to all of those um, who are interested. Um, but please understand, get to understand what it is that you can use this money for. There are very strict guidelines and, and requirements. Uh, there are restrictions. 
on how the money can be used, um, at least at this point in time. Uh, please understand again that there will be a comment period, and so you may, you, you may need to want to weigh in during the comment period about how you feel about these restrictions and these guidelines for the use. Um, broadband, like water and sanitation, is an earmarked use, and it's something that you can use the funding for. There is also broadband as an infrastructure to support public safety, to support resiliency, economic development, health, public, you know, um, uh, um, <coughs> uh, and other public improvements, innovations, technology, and basic infrastructure for communities. Um, but um, those, so those you have to read the register very carefully. Um, but please don't. I just want to let everyone know this in advance because. I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, we can do whatever we want. And so please, when, when you're having these conversations with your city managers, with your leadership, and especially when you go to city councils and start to put together your budgets, please read the register first. Please read the synopsis and any materials that we will distribute through Bill. Uh, keep in mind there's a comment period and keep in mind you can change this if you feel that it needs to be changed. But uh, you need to understand that going forward before you earmark pet projects from council members or others that may not qualify and be eligible. Thank you, Jory. I, I keep coming back to this being my favorite page. And you know, from a consortium standpoint, now that the middle mile network is at a point of nearly being on its way to being built, the focus of the consortia is the areas around it, A through H, M, you know, it, it's, it's the community network, it's, it's the collaborative sharing of fiber that can occur in, in all these areas. We, we need to move the conversations as quickly as possible. Brian, in, in terms of the Moore Park network that was designed, I mean, those funds can be used to build out your the area, whatever it is, the area J, area K, you know, it, it's, we need to be talking about anchor institutions and, and resiliency and all of the things that occur, you know, when we have fires and we need to stay up and running and everybody connected. And, and so this is a, an important conversation for the next phase. And uh, it's not just the middle mile, it is the interconnects in the last mile, you know, and, and the anchor institution resiliency staying connected that's going to be very important in terms of where the conversation goes. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, one more thing on our, yep. uh, everyone should understand is that um, the money just doesn't come to you directly. You have to submit um, a request for it. And in your submittal, which is still a, not quite understood what that looks like, um, uh, you may be able to sub submit a shovel ready master plan or a feasibility study or design, but it's, um, you will have to submit something. It will, it will be reviewed and scrutinized for el eligibility. Um, so this won't be determined by you, it will be determined by, um, by the program. And you'll provide me a link, Jory, of, to the Federal Register? Yes. Thank you. Terry, you had your hand raised. You're muted, though. <laughs> Gosh, sorry. I think George had his hand up first. Thanks. George? Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, really encouraged by the progress uh, in the discussions today. It's really incredible uh, to see a lot of these things finally, after very many years of discussion, coming to fruition. Um, at some point, you know, we talk about uh, the technical deployments, we talk about the infrastructure deployments, we speak about um, anchor institutions. Um, you know, and there's a lot of good foundational work there, but I think at some point the discussion may come political and to gain support from politics, I think perhaps we need to reinforce all of the reasons and the need of why uh, we need to do these things. Uh, I read in the Ventura Star just the other day that there's declining enrollment in uh, uh, grade schools and and local school institutions, and that's trending uh, with uh, numbers from the state that enrollments are down. And so as COVID or the next versions of COVID 
uh, mature uh, through the next few years, you know, the digital divide may increase or educational uh, disconnect may decrease. And I think that not only for future generations, but economic development, this work is incredibly important. So uh, I just want to uh, thank everybody for all of their participation and their willingness to continue this conversation and, and drive a positive impact and change. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you, George. Terry. I'm off mute. <laughs> so uh, um, I just want to, I'm going to actually add on to George's comment in a second, but I, the reason I raised my hand is to, to just mention uh, that the county has um, begun the implementation of a digital radio network. Hmm. Uh, that digital radio network is being used by uh, some portions of our fire department. We have our district attorney on it, and then we have other um, jurisdictions that are interested in it, um, Ventura being one, City of Ventura, City of Simi Valley, and most recently the City of Oxnard. And I mentioned this because um, right now we use microwave to interconnect our towers. Um, and uh, we're using other T T1s, T3s, um, whatever it happens to be to interconnect um, receivers uh, throughout the uh, area. And so we see the uh, this middle mile network and it's um, off ramps and um, side streets uh, facilitating our public safety uh, radio network and perhaps other uh, communication things that we uh, move towards in the future. And, and that kind of leads into the smart city thing. The other thing that um, George mentioned that I thought was that I thought was pretty interesting um, take on it, or I have a, a different view of it maybe a value is um, I read a lot of articles about how well um, the uh, distance learning worked. Um, and I don't mean that it worked all that well. I mean, it worked, but it, there were a lot of issues with distance learning, not just the fact that we didn't have broadband, but the whole process that we used for digital learning and, and the struggles that, that teachers, teachers I know personally, family members, how they struggled with the whole distance learning. We talk about digital inclusion and, and more specifically, um, uh, the training that we're gonna need to provide to the, to the populace uh, once uh, or as broadband is rolled out, it would be great if that particular thing, distance learning, if we could find a way to make distance learning actually be as effective as we all hope it would be. Um, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. Um, uh, I know that there are a lot of challenges there, but if we could find a way to solve that problem, I mean, telemedicine seems to be working really well. I had a telemedicine yesterday. It was flawless. It worked great. And I didn't have to go to the doctor's office or, or wait in the waiting room like, you know, a lot of us have to do. But that particular one, I still think there's a lot of opportunity for us to be successful and to use our technology to get there. Um, but it's going to need that additional, you know, training and also, of course, the, the devices to help us make that um, happen. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. Other comments? Yeah, it, it's uh, we're, we've solved the we're solving the infrastructure issues. The technology is a lot of it's on the shelf. It hasn't been even deployed yet. The hardest issues are the people issues, and, and that's where we're at right now. You know, it, it is really trying to create uh, technology applications that will help people, and, and we can navigate. And the literacy issue is going to apply to all of us. Noel? Bill, I would just like to add to what Terry, uh, Terry's comment. Uh, the education thing is very interesting. If anything was spotlighted by the, the crisis we hopefully are coming out of, it is that the education system is completely out of date. So while they were just trying to translate the existing education system that's 120 years old into a digital thing, and that is like trying to you know, retrofit a car with, with an engine which is not suited, uh, suitable. So I think, and the good news is that there's a lot of work going on right now in completely rethinking the education system, which channels we are working towards. And I think our in work with the infrastructure, the broadband, the communication, all this is going to be very, very interesting. It's sort of in, in just in time to be adopted by these new education models that are being, you know, rolled out. And I think that's going to be a very interesting thing. It's just not translating the old classic classroom into a digital thing. It doesn't make any sense. 
clear up it anyway. Thank you, Noel. Any other comments for the good of the order? Well, stay tuned. We'll look forward to getting another update out to you early next week. And uh, we'll, there's activities and reminders that will be coming your way. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to connect before a month from now. But if not, we'll see you next month. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Bill. Have a great thank weekend. You. Take care, up. everybody. Bye.